Hey guys, so I am back with another live Q&A video. This time it is JK Rowling. I'm super excited for this. I've asked her some questions. Um, maybe she'll answer them, maybe she won't. But we're going to keep refreshing. It's a Facebook Q&A, so these can be temperamental sometimes. It is on the Lumos Facebook page. Uh, briefly, Lumos is basically JK Rowling's charity and it's about institutions and things like that. Uh, just go on Lumos's website to find out the details. But yes, it says that the Q&A is quarter past eight. It is now 14 minutes past eight. So it's really due up any second. So I will keep refreshing. It is now quarter past eight as we speak. So it should be up now. But it's not up yet. Uh, I will keep refreshing the page. Sorry, that's a bit of a bad picture. I will try and sort this out. I'm going to pause the video and I will press play again when we're on to the Q&A. Here we are, allegedly. It says, author and founder of Lumos, uh, JK Rowling talks to host Lauren Laverne. The interview marks the official launch of We Are Lumos Worldwide, a global campaign to raise awareness of the 8 million children living in orphanages around the world and the work that Lumos is doing to help them return to family life. We will be on hand to answer any questions you may have throughout the broadcast. Please use the comment section below. We hope you enjoy watching. So I'm just going to try and copy and paste. Oh dear, hang on. It's at a critical stage. Sorry, something happened to my laptop, uh, to my camera, but it's giving you a story now, quickly, about the charity. There is hope, and it lies at the very heart of the problem. 80% of children in orphanages are not, in fact, orphans, but have parents or extended families who could care for them, given some support. And by better channeling existing donations... I hope this picture's okay for you. ...children at home. By directing funds away from so-called orphanages, we can transform systems of care. We can establish community-based services and prevent these places from ever taking root. Community-based services are a better investment for donors. They are more cost-efficient than residential care and reward children... 580 people so far. Placing children into orphanages... Oh dear. ...a necessity. It is preventable and reversible. And by giving communities options in how they support families, we can change the lives of millions of children... And give them it's a little bit quiet. Here we go. The picture's not that great either. Thank you. Beautiful film, beautifully narrated by J.K. Rowling. Thank you very much for being here. I think that illustrates um, the importance of the work that Lumos are doing. And a very warm welcome and thank you for joining us to everybody who's watching at home on Facebook Live. So, Joe, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, thank you. It's very shaky. Yeah, so it's been for you. I mean, absolutely incredible. Before we start... It's not in sync. Lumos, let's just... Um, look at some of the greatest hits that, that have been going on in recent months. Of course, the stage play, yes. just down the road from where we are tonight. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child opened here at the uh, Palace Theatre in London a few months ago to rave reviews. The script book of the play is a number one bestseller. Oh dear, the audio and the video aren't synced. And the for the diary is November the 18th um, for the release of Fantastic Beasts yes. and Where to Find Them. And of course, I do have to mention Career of Evil, another best-selling novel. Um, although Robert Galbraith's, obviously, yes. uh, on, on the cover. Right. That came out in paperback earlier in the year. How on earth did you manage it all? How did you fit it all in? Um, I have a very, very supportive family, and I never answer emails. I find it makes life a lot simpler for you. Let me try and make it smaller. To be doing. It's quite annoying for other people, but I tend to prioritise my writing. Has anyone else said that it's... Lumos? And my children. Children normally come first depending on how they're behaving. <laughs> it's nearly ten years since the last Harry Potter book. I mean, what, what's it been like revisiting the wizarding world again? This is this 2016 is very wizardy. Um, because I, I stepped away very out of sync. I, as completely as I can ever step away from Harry Potter, I, I really stepped away for about six or seven years. 
Oh dear. Yeah. And I wrote the first Girl Brave, and I wrote some other things that will probably see the light of day at some point. And I had a real break. And uh, but at the back of my mind, I always knew we would probably do Fantastic Beasts. So, but Harry Potter has its a kind of. I don't dare refresh, guys. Gravitational pull. Of but it's something on their end. Because the fan base is so enthusiastic still and so engaged. We'll just stick it out. I don't think I'll ever be entirely separate from Harry Potter. Nor would Stuart always there to plug into. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. I mean, obviously, lots of children and lots of grown-ups absolutely thrilled that, that you've returned to the Wizarding World. And a lot of people, I mean, I hear it from my friends, but you must hear it all the time. People say that, you know, their, their kids started reading through the Harry Potter book. There is nothing. You know, I say this every time, and I... I oh, really dear. Mean it, but what could be better to hear than that? And I Let me do this again. Tell me that they, oh, first I read the books to my child, and then he read them, and then... We queued at midnight, and then because we were fighting over them, and not just for the royalties, but What's you know, that's going an amazing on? thing to hear. Um, and, that, and there's also a, a phenomenon that is very meaningful to me. Books. I don't know whether I dare refresh. Some of my own experiences of pain and loss, and so on. Okay, we're going to quickly I refresh. A lot, particularly to people. Oh dear, I'm sorry, guys, but like I said, this happens with live. No, the quality hasn't so hasn't that is hugely meaningful to me. And I mean this is the main reason that we're here tonight in, in some ways talking about to talk about the importance of family. Right. That's that's a real a real key part of what Lumos is all about. Supporting families around the world. Sorry about this guys, but you can still hear the audio. It's we we have now about eighty eighty years worth of research to show that it is essential for a child's normal development, which by which I mean psychological, emotional, um, physical as well, that they have sustained one-on-one -on -one loving care. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to be in a picture-perfect, advert-ready family with 2.2 children, not at all. It means literally what it says, you need a loving one-on-one -on -one relationship. Normally, that will be your family. This quality is awful. Sometimes it can't be your family, but it could be a different family. Um, the scene on the film, we know that there are an estimated 8 million children currently institutionalised in the world, and we know that at least 80% of them aren't orphans. I think this, that's going to be a big surprise to people. I mean, there, there are a few kind of things that people are going to have to get their heads around, yeah. but that's going to be one of the key surprises, that most children in orphanages oh dear, sorry. are not orphans. Well, I mean, I'm not blaming anyone because, you know, it's called an orphanage. So what, what are you going to think? And I think that we have a cultural assumption, although it's a little illogical because we know most of us here tonight have grown up in quite privileged countries, and we know that we don't do that to our own children anymore. So that's kind of a clue. But we do have a cultural assumption that these institutions exist because the child has nowhere else to go. And the reality, unfortunate, is very, very different. And we do know, all of the research agrees, that there's little you can do worse for a child than put it in an, in an institution. And I have met babies who have learnt not to cry. And I have entered rooms with very small children who will, who will come sit on my lap from Adam to me. But they will crawl, as we all know. Oh, this is terrible. Anyone who has ever had anything to do with small children, they are hardwired to love and to seek love. A baby doesn't just cry for food. It wants to make these children exceptionally vulnerable. They have profound attachment issues. And the film just showed there was a Russian study that showed that uh, children who left an institution at 18 were 10 times more likely to enter prostitution, 50 times more likely to, be, to have a criminal um, past, um, and 500 times more likely to kill themselves. 500 times. So it's, it, it is this, it's this vast, silent tragedy. And there's a lot of research out there about it. Huge it. amount of research, and, and it always reaches the same conclusions, yeah. I mean, obviously, as you mentioned, for any parent watching, if anything happened to, to them, an orphanage will be the last option, wouldn't it, for of them? Course, everybody yeah. would rather have their kids
kids, brought up by extended family or friends or, you know, like you say, that one-on-one -on -one care. But I suppose, you know... In I don't know whether to try it again, but then we'll miss some. ...situation, isn't there? And if, if you're in a part of the world where there is no option for parents but to give up their children so that the child can have... Well, food is sometimes as basic as food. Right. So you have a system that incentivizes family breakup. So a good a question I am often asked, um, I'm asked many questions when I start to explain the issue to people and why I'm involved in it. We are culpable in this. We are incentivizing this system. Now, with the very best intentions, you know, we all of us in this room will have given money to try and help children. It's, it's primal. It's our instinct. We want to help children. And that is an honourable and a magnificent thing. I'm going to refresh it one more time and then However, I'll leave it, okay? What you may be doing Sorry about this. Is contributing to Sorry, guys. I really am. But I said live Q&As, this is what happens. So the result is, unfortunately, that some, right, at the benign end, some orphanages are set up with the best possible intentions. Unfortunately, the research shows even well-run institutions do a lot of damage. Then, unfortunately, you have institutions that really aren't run as businesses. Because we know that where a lot of donor money goes into orphanages, more and more are set up. And that's not because parents are dying. It's because it's a money magnet. And it pulls in young people who come in, again, with the best possible intentions. They want to volunteer in orphanages. And they're bringing foreign currency into the country. And then at the most grisly, ghastly, and appalling end, these places are absolute magnets for abusers. The child has been cut adrift from its biological fa family. You don't have people keeping tabs on what's happening to that child. And, as I've said, these children have attachment issues, so they're extremely easy to manipulate. So where is this happening? And, and if we know that orphanages are not good places for children to be, why is it still happening? Does it go back to that, that financial cycle that you described? Anywhere that there's been a natural disaster, orphanages will spring up. Anywhere that there's poverty, you will find orphanages. So it, it's, re, it's all over the world. You'll, you'll find institutions on every continent. There will always be cultural differences. You ask why if we... Cynical reasons, but there, there's, it's, there's sometimes what's causing the institutions is also the reason they can't assume it's poverty. It does take money when you've got tens of thousands of children in institutions to retrain workers so that they can do community-based care to institute a new and a better system that does take some money so when lumos is asking for funds a hundred percent of which goes to programs children sometimes it goes to children oh god what's happened here oh i think i just accidentally clicked on someone i'm so sorry guys i am really sorry some people are saying they're not experiencing any issues with the video so i don't know if it's just me Oh, I think it's in sync now. I went on, I think the technical term is a tweet storm. Yes, oh no. I did. That was, uh, I didn't mean to do that at all. In fact, it was quite an angry response. Um, what happened was that I tweeted something in support of Lumos. And as often happens when I, when I do tweet something, quite reasonably, a lot of people will come and say, oh, could you retweet this for my charity and so on. And, and uh, um, in the responses I got, to this tweet about Lumos was a charity, well, I'm going to call it a charity, I'm being quite kind. It was a, a company that runs this. Now, voluntourism, as I'm sure most people in this room will know, but if, if they don't, then I will say voluntourism is the term that we give to people who volunteer to go and, and work abroad. Um, but, the, but the 
key distinguisher between voluntourism and something that's worthwhile to do is voluntourism really does no one any good. So I'm sorry about this. About young people, but they are doing it with the best intentions. I know that. They're going into orphanages. They are perpetuating the attachment disorders that these poor children have. And then they leave. This company that tweeted me um, was saying that this was a great thing to do as a CV distinguisher. Um, and I was really disgusted, actually. I'm shaming, and I didn't. And I'm glad I didn't, because I think that would have taken away from what I really wanted to say, which was to make a broader point to young people thinking about doing this. This company was actually operating in Moldova, which is one of the very poorest countries in Europe. And it was saying, many institutions have closed, which we, Lumos, is facilitating. We're, we're helping them close them safely and getting children into, a, into batter families or into foster care. And they said, but we've still got some, some places for you to volunteer in. It's like, it's okay. We've still got some people in this dire situation. You can come volunteer. So I got quite upset. And I did my big Twitter rant about it. But I would say to any 18 or 19 year old who, who wants to volunteer, go volunteer in a community-based project. Do your research. Make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you're really making a difference. Because you could, with the best intentions, be propping up a system that is harming children. OK. So let's talk about the solution then, I mean, to, to this, these options of being destitute on the street or, or being in an orphanage. There are solutions. There are definitely solutions. It's important to say that we are not walking in saying, we know the answers um, and let us impose our answers on you because they're in every one of the countries we're working in, there are experts on the ground who know what needs doing, but they often don't have the funds to do it and they don't have the clout that some NGOs have. We are very lucky. We've partnered with the EU, and we work with the UN and WHO, and we, we can redirect funds. We give our own funds, of course, but we can also help put a package together. Um, so what's the answer? Well, Other people have said the video is shaky as well. Many people have vested interest in keeping the orphanages open. And again, I use the word orphanages, and I don't like using it. The institutions open. And again, that's not always nefarious. It could be people who say, well, this is a poor country and this is my livelihood working in this institution. Well, our answer is, you do not have to lose your job. Provide the funds so you're retrained as a community worker. You can become a health nurse. You know, you're, you run the day centre where we'll give effective I'm a bit upset care. about this, sorry. Your livelihood away. We want to show you how we can make this work for the children and for you. So that's one solution. That's what we would do with the actual institutions. As I've said, sometimes the children are very sick. We I'm going to quickly give it another refresh. Because you, you, if anyone's watching this, you can't watch it like this. You can't. You can't watch a video like that. And I'm really sorry that that's happened. I hope we haven't missed too much. I'm sorry. Say 80% of children, generally speaking, can go back to family with the support the family want them. But where that's not possible, foster care is normally our answer, high quality foster families. Yeah. So it sounds like Lumos is having a, a, a huge impact. I mean, it's, it's no longer started out as a spell in Harry Potter, but it isn't just a spell anymore. It's really changing things. It is. I think the latest figures that we've got 17,000 children out of institutions to date, I'm very proud of. Um, as I say, various systems, high, high quality foster care. Um, also small group homes where children effectively live in a family type situation so it's consistent they're always it's that one-on-one -on -one loving care we're talking about we've prevented 15,000 children going into institutions and we're working in more and more countries as we go so yeah I am I'm very proud okay, I'm not surprised and this really is at the heart of what Lumos is all about isn't it I mean creating real step change solid goals and 100% but what is if you take nothing else away tonight, I would like you to remember this is a solvable problem. This is at, we can actually finish this. We could solve this. For Eight million children. It's this unfathomably large figure. You, you, it's, it's so hard to really take that in, what that means. Eight million children. But we can solve it. 
We absolutely do need funds, but we also need to change minds. If we change minds, we will change lives. If people understand, I, I'm not going to give money to this orphanage. I'm going to do a little bit of research, and I'm going to find out who's operating in that country, who will reunite families. I'll give the money there. You know, if, if everyone did that, that would change so much. If you, if you go forth tonight and you hear someone say, well, you know, he's going to volunteer in an orphanage or, you know, we're, we're helping set up an orphanage, you know, the re-education in itself will stop this happening going, going forward. I mean, Joe, the, you set the charity up, um, I think, about 10 years ago. Yeah, you must be immensely yeah. proud of, of what it's achieved over that time. I am, because I've met, I've met children who have, uh, who we've managed to get back to their families, and they want to become advocates. She's an amazing woman. You know, for the NGO, they want to. We, I've met. Um, a little girl not long ago, well, I say little, this is a, she appeared to me to be 12 years old, she was actually nearly 15, but this is what the institutions do to children, their physical development also, the research shows, is impaired, but she's now an incredibly articulate advocate for deinstitutionalization, so, yeah, that's a wonderful thing, and we do know, I think, I think it's just over 4,000 occasions where we've found children who were very severely neglected, and we've, we, we believe we saved lives, so that's obviously massive also. Fantastic. I mean, you must get a lot of support from the Harry Potter fan community as well. Yes. So tell me about them. They are, um, they're extraordinary. I've never, I've never heard of a fandom that's so engaged and they are... Oh, it's making me cry. Fandom, actually. They are. And I am immensely proud of that. I am. So they, they yeah, they've been, they, they done fundraising and they've done awareness raising and yes they're extraordinary well speaking of those extraordinary people and um, you know that when we announced this facebook <gasps> broadcast that we're, we're currently right in the middle of i hope it's me um, threw the question out we asked the world what question they would like to ask you about lumos and unsurprisingly we were in inundated We've got a couple here um, the first comes from ardit aliti um, which is a lovely question. On Lumos's website, it states that 80% of children are living in orphanages, as we've talked about, uh, and they're not in fact orphan, orphans. But what work does Lumos do to ensure that the remaining 20% of children who are orphans also get the love and care that they deserve? Well, that is a, a brilliant question because that's a question I get asked all the time. Ah, but some of them are orphans, so what are you going to do there? Well, the answer is we need high quality foster care uh, where it's appropriate and obviously it's all dependent on the child's particular circumstances it may be appropriate to have uh, um, something like uh, Bernardo's used to have small scale family sized um, care units as it were which is as, you know, as close to a family as you could get we'd set those up um, adoption in the child's own community is almost always the best way to proceed when you're, when you're um, trying to settle a child. But, but, so there are lots of different options, um, depending on what the country is. Okay. Yeah. I imagine that the journey of Harry Potter provides hope for some orphaned children, ensuring them that the sun may truly one day emerge from behind even the densest of clouds. What do you think? most important life lesson for a wizard. <laughs> um, so this what's the most impressive single? Because ultimately what? it's about human nature and examining the fact that when people were given magic, it didn't solve everything. The same problems existed, just in a different form. People could still be bigoted and cruel. So my answer would be, what's the best life lesson for a wizard would be the same as for the rest of us which is you do the best you can where you are with what you've got and that's what I think we should all try and do. Perfect note um, to, to wrap the interview up. I need to say a huge thank you to Jo um, and all of the wonderful pleasure that you've given so many children and adults around the world and um, through your work but also for your passion for this cause and you know, setting up Lumos which is making such a huge difference uh, to the lives of children around the world. Thank you. Thank you very much thank indeed. You. Thank you. Mm, that was beautiful, even though the camera quality was rubbish. <laughs>
There we go, I guess that's it. Um, so yeah, I really loved that Q&A, that was wonderful, even though obviously my question didn't get picked. But J.K. Rowling is truly a wonderful woman. Um, that was a, a wonderful Q&A. That might just give you a glimpse of why I consider her to be my inspiration, my idol, my queen, my everything. Um, I'm very sorry, I don't know what was happening there. Some people, oh god, you don't want to see that. Some people were saying that um, their videos were fine. Some people were saying that their videos weren't. So I really don't know what happened there. But anyway, let's not talk about it for too much. Uh, thank you ever so much for watching if you've got this far. If you have got this far in my video, then please comment below with the words JK Rowling is queen. JK Rowling is queen if you've got this far. And if you have got this far, I might um, give you a special something. So if you get this far, write in the description box, JK Rowling is queen. And whoever does this might just receive a special something. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.